Hello, welcome to Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk Inside of a Bag of Milk. I almost just forgot the title of the game. Um, I've played this before, but the reason why we're playing it is because its sequel has recently come out and we're going to play, play that. So we're going to go through the first game first. It's pretty short. Um, and it depicts mental illness very, very well. Uh, it's a horror game. It's like a horror visual novel, but it's way cooler than most visual novels I've ever seen. Write down your name. Sean. I'm on my way to the store, rehearsing the speech. I haven't been out for so long that I haven't been out for so long that I've forgotten what words they say when they enter the store. All right, I got it. Let me just turn down the volume. All right, let me check this the audio for the All right, that should be good. Um I haven't been out for so long that I've forgotten what words they say when they enter the store. On my my way to the store. Who are you talking to? I imagine being a game character. What if it helps get to gather my thoughts? What game? Well, you know, there are games in which you see characters' thoughts right on the screen, you know? So I thought if someone reads my thoughts, then I have to be really concentrated so as not to whip up the extra, haha. <laughs> I'm deeply breathing in. Hello, can I? Damn, I forgot. 19th attempt. And I'm failing again. I'm, I bite my lips with annoyance. So once again, hello, can I get... Wow! A whole word more! Thank you, I'm trying really hard. In my opinion, this time the I sound was longer than usual. Do you think this is it? Who knows? Hello, can I? <sighs> I'd better keep my lips sealed. Paha, <laughs> loser. Don't insult me, please. By the way, you've been walking with your left foot on the, on asphalt and your right foot on grass for a whole minute. What? My right leg froze in the air. <laughs> How much? 50 steps on asphalt and 51 on grass. You will have to cancel the previous step. Hee hee hee. How do you imagine it? This is not the first time. You are taught how to do it. Come on. I... I don't remember. I'm going to burst into tears. Ugh, from the beginning. So, step one. Take a step back to get your foot exactly into your own trail. Wait, wait. How is it step one? What then? So it's already the 52nd. But wait, if I'm going backwards, then 50th. It still doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, okay. Step 50th. Take a step back to get your, your foot exactly in your trail. Could you paraphrase it at least a little? You can't just repeat a phrase without changing at least one word. People don't talk like that. You're hopeless. You make it sound like it's my fault. The store closes soon, in an hour or so. You'll be very very guilty if you do not buy milk damn really so are you ready yes yes i gently i gently changed the position of the leg purely carefully peering carefully into the thick grass when i entered the store i asked the very first person i met hello can i oh excuse me what Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. You'd better not do it. He's clearly not going to change his lines. You run the risk of falling into an endless loop. Excuse me, what? Oh. 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 What? Oh. What is he trying to tell you? He's trying to scare me, but how does he know that I'm terrified by the letter O? What's so terrible about it? I have a frightening image as soon as I imagine it. I can show. Explaining won't be enough, but...
something like that. So I'll just keep on ignoring his question. What? Oh. What? Oh. What? Oh. What? Oh. I gather all the will into a fist. Oh? Oh. My interlocutor shook and crawled. You just repeated after him. And it worked. Do it more often. Wait, I said that he crawled, but did he really crawl? Because I didn't even look in his direction. When exactly did you say that? Yeah, just now. Personally, I did not hear. You're just trying to distract me. But I know that my words were shown on the screen. I'm standing by the shelves. On the shelves, are, there are bags of milk. The two of us are standing, and milk lies, or maybe... Hey, hey, slow down. Do you even remember why you came? To buy milk. So buy. Right here? How, in your opinion, should I reply? Hmm. I suppose something like, not here. You're getting on my nerves. Not here. Take the bag and go to the cash desk. I guess the first sentence. And you like, and you like for spite. Like for spite, didn't make a pause before the second one. Want to take away all my small victories? I sigh and pull my hand to take milk, or rather a bag of milk inside, or rather a bag of milk inside a bag, or rather a bag of milk inside of a bag of milk, or rather a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside of a bag, or rather a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside. Reception, reception. Fifteen minutes before store closing. Hurry up. I remembered what these games are called. Visual novels. And by the way, the numbers are written there, in full, in letters. Are visual novels worse than books? But authors are not too lazy there, and you, and you don't be lazy too. Wait, I thought only your thoughts were visible on screen. Not anymore, so watch the language, hee <laughs> hee. Anyways, you heard me. Hurry up or there'll be no good at home. Already running. Hello, can I get milk please? You have it. Uh, give. I put out a weighty bag at the pay desk. Of course, not just a bag, but milk too. Hello, can I uh, get it back, please? No. Please. No. But please, mom will, will throw me out of the window if I get back without milk. No. But why not? Give more. But I don't have anything else. Hey. What? Pay for milk. You're pathetic, they hate you. <sighs> Pay for the milk. Ah, uh, really? What would I do without you? Let me explain something. You see those choices, right? Um, they're really interesting, because if you pick those choices, you lose, and you basically, like, die, kind of, but... It's really weird because it makes you think like, who are you playing as? Because you're like in the head of this girl who's talking to someone and that someone is you. But who are you in this game? I have no idea. And it's kind of like the inner thoughts, right? And if you pick the wrong choices, you just like reset the game. I'm not going to pick the wrong choices now because I want to, you know, play the other game, the sequel. I don't want to have to you know go through this entire game there's no checkpoints you have to just go through the entire game again if you fail so i don't want to pick the wrong ones actually i don't think it's the entire game but you have to go back pretty far and then you have to like play through the game again so i'm not going to do that but just know that if you make her angry like the girl that you're talking to if you make them angry they they basically like say your name because you, you know how i entered my name sean at the beginning they like they scold the name and then the game has like restarts anyways haha really what would i do without you i pull crumpled cash out of my pocket and give it to the cashier so like there are very interesting options like when i when it says like you are pathetic that are really interesting that i want to click but also i don't want to because then the game resets and i don't want to have to do that so i'm picking all the right options i pull the crumpled cash out of my pocket and give it to the cashier he starts to carefully examine it. About two days have passed before he nodded satisfactory and put a cash in the machine. Thank you, goodbye. I'm walking down a familiar street pass, 
pass a gate a, a gas station a gay station a bag of milk unpleasantly pulls away my hand reminding me of the times i took physical therapy by the way they gave me a bag at the pay machine so now i'm carrying a bag of milk inside another bag don't get me wrong i just like the pure pyramidal structure of verbal construction constructions i don't know the gas machine is getting closer how are you feeling thanks for your interest i feel like a mile of ice cream what's that supposed to mean as if i tell you but i'm really interested see like that if i say you're just a weirdo i think the game ends well look the ratio of water to milk and the volume of Eric occupied by me is about 30 to 1. I agree, it's not the tastiest ice cream, unless you want to drink more than eat. So, the way from the store to the gas station is a stick, and the way from the gas station to home is ice cream. For today's walk, my body will be in every part of the way, of this way. Simple maths. Okay. I feel movement under my feet. Asphalt grains, petrol stains. I'm trying to keep my balance. And how do people move on something as uneven as urban plain? Neat heel sock. I count every meter of the way I've gone. I even close my eyes for more concentration. Hey, watch out. Ah? Uh? I unconsciously take a sharp step aside. At the same moment, a huge bear sweeps past me with a wild ripple. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm throwing a stumbling peek at the rapidly moving animal. Its red eyes, in turn, look at me with mockery. Did you see that? How brazen. It was a truck. Oh, really? Although, if you think about it, are there bears with eyes on the back of their head? You might have died. Come on, are you saying someone will seriously want to kill an innocent girl carrying a bag of milk? The world is cruel and dangerous. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the world you're talking about. My, ta my path continues. If you think about it, the way from the store has one interesting property. In the most bizarre ways, it adjusts to me. When I hurry, all the traffic lights are servicely fully extinguished. When I want to cry, a cloud appears and pours rain flows that hide my tears. Right now, I feel how the cloud is slowly gathering over my top. I'm sad. You know, those, those um, options, when you like when you're mean to the girl it reminds me a little bit of bloodborne because there's a um an origin in bloodborne i don't remember if it's called like origin path will pass or whatever but your origin you can pick being um what is it i think it was called waste of skin and it has zero benefits and all of the stats are terrible and the description is just like you shouldn't have been born and it's like damn holy crap it's like you're prob it's very not logical to like click that option like to be a waste of skin or like click being mean to the girl but the fact that it's like just there as an option to like presented to you even though it's like not the correct i guess option that's really interesting i'm sad are you sure all this is really happening and how else have you ever been visited by the idea that all this is only in your head? The instruction did not say that at all. Apparently these pills don't work on me either. I think I should say nothing. I don't I don't think I should have said that. I don't think I should have said that. Oh god. You know what? What? Since I am a character in a visual novel, I want to talk to whoever is reading it right now. This could affect on your recovery in a wrong, wrong way. No, I'll let her do what she wants. I squeeze my head with the hands and set a thought block. With the edge of my eye, I notice a small bench. A great place for cliched visual novel monologues. I'm getting closer, putting a noticeably heavy bag of milk nearby and raising my head to the sky. Listen. I'm a little embarrassed, haha. So this girl is talking to me now. This girl is talking to me, like Sean, the reader. I understand I'm going crazy. Drugs are working less and less effectively, so... 
Ultimately, things will happen painlessly, I hope. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Really? I must be quite unlike an exemplary protagonist, right? To be honest, I haven't read many visual novels. Sometimes I regret it, because now I need a lot of effort just to dis distinguish letters and words. By the way, if you don't mind, I wouldn't like to say my diagnosis. Let at least you be the one who sees me as I am. Even I made you up, even if I made you up, don't take it away from me, okay? Don't ask me about too much. How stupid is all this? From the very beginning you followed me, read my delusional thoughts, heard my stupid conversations. Maybe I seem crazy and weird to you? <laughs> what is it like to see the world with my eyes? Ever since... <clears throat> happened... Something happened. I only see red everywhere. No, don't worry about me. I've been used to it for a long time. To be honest, I even forgot what other colors look like. Let it go. Haha. <laughs> Those monsters from the store, they didn't scare me at all, because I know they won't hurt me. Sometimes I think they're the ones who are scared. Can you imagine it? By the way, if you want to ask me, what happened? Please don't. Do you promise? Really? Do you promise? Really? Do you promise? Really? Oh god. This is just gonna keep going. What if I say, like, of course? I'm serious. Of course you wouldn't. You couldn't not to ask. In the end, I'm just talking to myself. Sooner or later, I would have raised this topic. So, you're really wondering what happened to me? I won't take time. What do you see? I don't know. Pink. Are you sure? One way or another, this is my dad. Some of his parts at least. We do have a very difficult family, but despite all the problems, I would never have thought. Sorry, I shouldn't have raised my voice. In general, he threw himself out of the window and died. This is my last memory. Then, a long gap. Strange. Very strange. Today is the first time I've been able to buy something from a store without a serious incident. Of course, the medicine helped me, however. I think it's more of your merit. I was thinking all the time, do not screw up in front of the reader, or, oh my god, what will he think, haha. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to become a character in a visual novel for the sake of going to a store today, but it clearly borne fruit. Thank you. By the way, I think there's some frameworks in our communication. That's how I like it, haha. <laughs> and yet, I'm so sad lately. I think more and more about what my life has become ever since dad. Well, you understand. Day after day is the same. I've tried so many pills that I can't take, I can't feel the difference between them anymore. As long as they keep me on my feet, I'm happy, haha. <laughs> but you know what? Today is a special day because I have you. I want to tell you so much. It was very rude of you. Oh no. I will not press you. I just advise you. Go home. I understand. Well, dear reader, let's go. There's a jump scare coming up. I stop on my floor and hang by the railing. Repeating this action every day, like a ritual, I stopped being afraid of heights. A few minutes ago, the pills finally came to naught. So I'm, enjoy I'm just enjoying blissful silence. When I am under the influence of drugs, terrible and unpleasant melodies sound in my head, mixing with the sounds of the world around me. They create a terrible dissonance in my head. I turn around and go to my apartment. There it is. Did you bring milk? Hi, Mom. Did you bring my milk? Yes, Mom. 
Did your new medicine help? Yes, mom. Go to bed. Yes, mom. And that is the game, okay? See, it's pretty short, very short and sweet. I fucking love it. I love this game. Um, so now we're gonna go and play this, the, the sequel. I've been waiting for this game ever since I played the original. I saw that this was like, you know, it, they had like a Steam page up, like announcing that it was gonna be made, and I've been, I've been waiting like for a very long time for this game. I'm very excited. I'm gonna turn down the volume just because you can never have it too low. Better low than too, you know, loud. Um, all right. Let me just change. Let me just. Here it is. I have to go full screen for this. Um. Wait, is this working? I need it. I need to make sure it works. Yes. Okay. Ooh, animation. It's very loud. Okay. Stores close. Okay. So, so this is like a, a movie of what we just watched. What we just played. This is so cool, oh my god. Let me move my mic closer just so that you can hear me better. This is so cool. Uh, this is actually so fucking cool. Oh my, I love this already. I love this already. This is... Holy shit. I'm... Okay. I need to turn this down. It's so loud. Oh my god, it's so loud. Okay, hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. Here, let, let me just make sure. Holy crap, it's so loud for me. Oh my god, I'm so hyped. This is already so cool. I'm just, I'm, I'm just like doing volume stuff, sorry. Um, let's do this, alright? Milk, outside a bag of milk, outside a bag of milk. That was a cool animation. This is definitely higher quality than the first game. I, I think I know it's definitely longer too. Hands? Oh, okay. I'm walking to my room. Try not to look around. Playful shadow shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the halls, the walls, the ceiling. One of the shadows whiz past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control in track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. Okay, so this is directly after the, the first game. This is directly after the first game. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. Ahaha, that's so silly. 
I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that... I break into a run and dash towards the closed door. The shadows intensify, their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers. But then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice to b but to break the door down. Break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it's actually what if it actually revives them? No, no, no. I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when I when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. As expected, there's no living corpses inside. But there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me as it's unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the kitchen table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside of the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk towards my room through a narrow corridor. Oh, baby. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tightening, tight grip that stops me from moving. After stiffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, a thin and sharp, thin and sharp like a blade. Again, I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black ca cavities where the eye should be, ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. The moment it says that, its claws pierce my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time, but... Why? Why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up, strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, foamy, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poison, poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me, kill me. Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fl fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory, so I can gather them all later. I need to remember, I need... A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I... Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. Oh my god. Holy crap. Why? Is she like lact lactose intolerant? But why would they like do the like a needle sticky thing? Because, like, lactose intolerance isn't the same thing as, like, an allergy, right? I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. 
Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my refre reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I slept were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slip away. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. And now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. God damn, look at all those pills. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it. I do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do you, we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides and to my surprise it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright li red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin and I start rig rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same red, blood red color. There were some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's, all, it's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pills fly into the waste bin as well. The next half hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? It's so simple. I just I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already asleep anyways. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. Me. Me. I'll talk. I'll talk to you. Hey. Let me drink some water real quick. <sighs> Look at the art. Hey, long time no see. It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. You know we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? There you go, bullying me again. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, alright? I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Hmm. I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. Hey, <laughs> I can only imagine. I can imagine how angry you are right now. <sighs> what made you so happy all of a sudden? And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple hours ago? I don't know what you mean. Stop lying. Nuh uh, I still don't understand. Whatever, unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. Don't even try ruining my mood. I just, I wanna have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see, yeah. I. Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. 
go wash your face. Then we'll do decide what to do with you. Holy crap. You know, I don't think my character's very healthy. <laughs> I'm in front of the mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me. Trying not to drown in their giggles, but then me in the mirror also shows a creepy smile, bares her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I started counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square pyramid. A square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better, but my mind is splitting apart now. Ah, let's apologize. Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. Fine. You can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I... I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? Yes. Somehow, if I, f I find that hard to believe, then why did you do it? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away my, the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsen my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsively. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air, catch it with my mouth. Dude, perfect. This is so cool. I'm, I'm so into this already. Oh my god, this is so cool. I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes, pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. I love the pixel art too. It gives it like... like the, the color scheme is very cool. Do you want to talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. What do you want then? I just want to lie down for a bit. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? Because I know, like, the implications of... Not the implications. Because I know, like, the effect of, like, choosing the wrong choices in the other game, I'm scared of, like, every decision I make, it feels like it has, like, some sort of weight to it. But so far, it doesn't seem like pick there's, like, a wrong choice in this game. That so far, like, any choice I pick is, like... It just progresses the story. So that's nice. Can you stay silent, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. <sighs> I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed in my head, from my head, and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. 
In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You, all, you can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. Look at those fireflies. <laughs> I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts. They're fireflies now. Start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord. Forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings come from coming from the ceiling makes me start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job, now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you, should it? Yeah. And what do you want me to do then? I don't know, it's up to you. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyways. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Forget about them and go to bed. No, you don't get it. If I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts or else. I glance around the room. There's, there are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clocks just hit midnight. It's so late already. But I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please, tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking? What, 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 what were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I. Oh my God. What are we looking at? What? I roll up my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They are so itchy. Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Did you drink milk? Did he bring milk? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I wonder. If I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, all my eyelashes, one after another, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, what have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then I need to have a bath, and then, here, drink some, why, why, why? Oh, I died, I died. I stand in the middle of the room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. Ehehe. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no. If I even make the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Who, me? No, no, of course not. I think you can forget to put up your mind block. I can see through you. Rude. Alright then. 
So we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch? Yeah. Oh my oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point and click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happen. It sounds so fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make me even more interesting. It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. Do what you want. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, oh, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls from under my sweater. Wowee! Wowee! <laughs> Wowee! <sighs> Little buggy. I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm so sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. Hehehe, <laughs> it tickles. One down, looks for the others. Let's look for the others. Yeah! I wonder what happened if I said something about the smoke. Oh, point and click, alright. Your usual notebook guide pages. Glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's only the kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosages and side effects? Yeah. I thought you know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My screams make the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight. It ends up entering my business-like ear. <laughs> hey, let's continue searching. So many things. I turn my eyes toward an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it. A small tower hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. Yes, I'm gonna click on everything. Oh my god, there's so many. Oh. Interesting. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling, at least 300 feet of, off the floor. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't take- I don't care at all. Like, totally. And I'm definitely not worried. Not even a the little smit. Not even a smidgen of the little smit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, no, you don't. Then act normal. I look at the mound of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't even want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You already fixed that. You've already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Things could have been much worse. Yeah. I heave a deep sigh. Come closer and extend my arm. My hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturn, pills rain from it. Along with them, a firefly, hurrah! Hooray! After circling above my head for a couple times, it finally lands on in my plump palm. The firefly ru rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulders, crawls straight into my ears. My mind becomes a little, a bit clearer. I cannot read right. I'm gonna avoid this for now. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage boring. 
There's nothing here, indeed. No self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. Ah, there's so many things. There's so, so many things. Right, insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around, the leaves smell of dust and cardboard and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know. Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? Oh, God. That is unpleasant. It's not easy to get out of here, hee <laughs> hee. Oh, I don't like the quietness now. Put the music back on, oh god. I look up towards a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh well, what happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches, we'd better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be up there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but they become fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they just occupied this place. Don't you understand now? I'll pretend I do. Okay, what else is there? Oh boy, there's so many things. Oh my god, there's so many things. And what are those? Ah, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're empty. I stare at them so intensely that I burn them with my eyes, hee <laughs> hee. Now they're just covered in the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. I'm continuing the search of what? Okay, we are. What's left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, that's nice. What if I turn them all on? Okay, it doesn't do anything, okay. Well then, okay. This, 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 this. Oh, wait, there's an umbrella too, I missed that. There's so many things, okay. Fan. Eehehe. <laughs> What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that is looking straight at a giant fan. And? I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in, in the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. I look down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly, its contents also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool, senseless, and cruel. Totally not cool. You are there, but I don't care. Is it me you're laughing at? What? I never. After all, you're not my pet. Eehehe. <laughs> I'm not going along with this nonsense anymore, got it? Got it. Hey, it wasn't on purpose this time. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special, mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks of the, out of there, and I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you, do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. All right, all right. What do you like most there? Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me, let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbing the warm memories. You never graduated though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up 
earlier than usual, he told me I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago. The tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there and we had dinner and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. It doesn't even matter. Okay. Good. I look at my bag again. Light pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in the feet of sudden anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It has already happened countless times. What do you mean you go, you go, you go blind? I've spent weeks memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see a small insect is crawling towards me from my bag. It's barely glowing and it can't even fly. I guess this fireflies are just really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it and then flies up. There you go boy, good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speeds. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly that under my ear. That's exactly what happened. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one's kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure, let's continue searching. No, I'm not gonna finish. I'm gonna look at everything. This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means it's it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that? Rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationary store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Well, maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one? Buy what? Ask who? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another? And how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the, the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the floor, from on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the pages are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Okay, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with headache in my head. I know it's gonna happen. The rustling has stopped even though the wind is start still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look if I wait a little longer. If I wait... Open your eyes. No! It's okay, just do it. No way! I know you're lying. Calm down. No! Calm down. No! Calm down. No! Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know, did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you? I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling glows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look, look, there! A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly! The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into a perfect silence. But only for a moment. The buzz that has always haunted me lifts, fills the surroundings. But it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up and in and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spent some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Phew, are you okay? We're running short on time, let's continue searching. Okay. Eehehe, <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure there's no living creatures. No living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of 
Favorite items, close your eyes and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slapped my cheeks to re return to my senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside? No, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting me to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. Okay... Hehe. <laughs> I look at my laptop top. I haven't been I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. A bizarre item, I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful, tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably bought it brought it in here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't pro prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in I've spent whole, my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You had a music hobbies. Yeah, I did, before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this, you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. All right, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable li living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. Here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives. Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. You'll end up returning to that subject anyway. On one beautiful, wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster's house. Your hamster house and brings you to the pet store. Now your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most important part, you have a lot of neighbors there here. Their cages are identical to yours, and the other hamsters look identical to you too. This means you and are all the same. Apart from the fact that they were born at that shop. We'll ask, what does it that indicate? And I'll tell you, nothing at all. I forget what I was talking about. Gosh. Okay, let's start over. This time, try to avoid stupid hamster analogies. You know I'm not at fault here. So, I had a lot of friends online. Tens, hundreds of them. Impossible to count. Is it impossible though? I had exactly 317 of them. Although I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Hey, don't get it distracted. Oh right. From my 317 friends, 68 were into gaming, just like me. 130 like drawing, just like me. The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. And when I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Alright? You can split numbers evenly, no problem, but math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. Major conundrum, right? Gets the point. I knew, of course, that no real people exist on the web. I also understood that all my friends die the moment I turn off my laptop. I s but I still wasn't even a bit worried. Why? Do you know what computer programs consist of? It's just a combination of numbers, which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend, and I don't care whether they know about my existence or not. I gotta drink water. <sighs> Anyways, as I was, as I was saying, every program has its own algorithm and purposes. It's a mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, you'll be able to predict the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. You don't need to follow me around, just listen. I sit on the floor, and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. The only thing reflected in it is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just executable code. Hey, let me know if you need a break. One day someone appeared, from that point on my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was a good he was good at pretending. At some moments I let him trip, trip, trick me. Hey look. Huh? Suddenly a firefly slowly crawls out from the laptop vent grill. I reach for it, gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. It's like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it says or wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time it thinks about a further course of action, then flies up and dashes into my ear. 
Let's continue searching. And what about your story? You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm, so I'm sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story, maybe. Do you promise? I promise. And if you forget, then remind me with the code word, for example. What code word? I'll think of one later. And for now, let's keep searching for my fireflies. I doubt it. All of the car uh, compartments are locked. What if? I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. <sighs> Last thing. I'm not allowed to search here. Alright. Finish searching. You found all the fireflies. Amazing. I guess... I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyways. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. A zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony. Breathe in for some fresh air. Somehow those words trigger a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. There's no way somebody cares about you that much. Holy crap. Alright, well, let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk and yet... And yet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow, either. And the day after tomorrow? And never ever? That's a goodbye then? No. I still have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've blurted it out way too much today. A lot of stuff I want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I won't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I am... I nervously scratch my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop it, I get it already. Still, I won't, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. And I don't get a no. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Sleep, sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. sleep. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets. Even though the electric heater is working, hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just don't, won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down and started imagining that I'm always a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? And then one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me, hissing. It was horrible. And then, well, well deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. And after that, I stopped. But then the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed there. I guess they liked this place. Hold on, this is really loud. Okay. They kind of... They always follow in my wake, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course, they're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. Started chaotically twirling 
my fingers with enthusiasm form complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. And I was trying so hard he uh, here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax, nobody can hear you. So what do you want to s what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. It's Tommy in it. You're late. Uh, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that? None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Ha! Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Tresca says that and strikes a mighty strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you so full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird, constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko and his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go. I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a, a cutting smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to re retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, he, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. After reaching the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We are closing in 20 minutes. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every 5 minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says, we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go, what are you waiting for? No, huh? Oh, oh yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realized that we're lost. I can't believe that you don't know where they sell milk. I am. Um, maybe we should ask someone for directions? Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresco lets go of my hands and walks confidently towards one of the few store's customers. That person is studying, standing with their back to us, studying something on something on the shelf. Hello, can I? I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry towards them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I am, um, is if he's yours, please get him away from me. Yes, I'm sorry. I grab Cheska's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and eyes popped. He's also shaking. 
Only when we turn her in the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I got so scared, he said. What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover my, his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Knowing other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're me. Who, me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hang a new sign on the door. There you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you, move. I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of the long queue that has formed after Tresca. I squeeze through it towards him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. Holy shit. That's mean. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is re Okay, I'm not gonna say that. But you heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to their cashier of much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees, then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving Tresca. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know, he turns away from the path and walks straight towards the highway with determination. I stare at his back confused. How long have we been going? Oh wait, something's happening. Seems like you're not helping me at all. Okay, I got a ch An hour and 17, alright. A new playful light flickers in Cheska's eyes. Ooh, nightmare, huh? Ooh, wait, was that the end of the game? These cutscenes are so cool. I love them. Oh, that was the end. That was oh my god, that was so that was so cool. I love that. Holy crap. Good job, all of you people. Actually, this is a very small team. Yeah, it's it's mostly just that one person, Nikki, Nikita. There's other people too. Good on you guys. But that was a very small people. Well, a small like, group of people. Visuals, ghost funeral. Ghost funeral, I love the visuals. Animation. Alina Chrome, Clem, Clematista. Any post credit scenes? I don't know. That was a very interesting game. I really like that. That was really cool. English translation, aesthetic dialect, dialectic. Huh, wow. That is a lot to take in. <laughs> Special thanks to frogs. That was a lot to take in, a lot to think about. Wow. That was so interesting. I, I, I don't have much to say, but I'm just like I'm trying to gather my thoughts. I'm trying to count. I'm trying to find the fireflies. <sighs> that was milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk. Wow. Thanks for thanks for watching, everyone. That was amazing. <laughs>